Hi everyone, welcome to another installment of Komen Orange County's online series, Caring Through COVID-19 Together. My name is Megan Klink and I am the CEO of Susan G. Komen Orange County. And today we have the privilege to host Betsy Chang Ha, Executive Director of Quality and Population Health Management for CalOptima. CalOptima as a public agency was founded as a county organized health system that offers health insurance programs for low income children, adults, seniors, and people living with disabilities. CalOptima is an essential partner in providing access and treatment for the most vulnerable in our community and preserving and expanding the breast health safety net. I would love to share a little bit about Betsy's very impressive credentials. Uh, in her current role, Betsy oversees quality improvement and analytics, population health management, and behavioral health integration. And her, Im her impressive background includes leading healthcare reform for the incarcerated population in California prison system, creating a lean approach for clinical IT implementation to ensure clinical adaptation and sustainability, and creating a safety net provider network in a for-profit practice management organization serving Medicaid and Medicare members. And it is worth noting, Betsy started her career as a pediatric hematology, oncology, and bone marrow transplant nurse. And if that was not enough, and I'm not even reading all of, all of uh, Betsy's bio, uh, but I thought this was really interesting. Betsy is a 500 hour level certified yoga instructor specialized in trauma-informed yoga in working with at-risk youth. Uh, Betsy, welcome. Thank you for being here. You truly are remarkable. And I am really excited, and I know everyone tuning in is really excited to hear uh, your updates on CalOptima member programs and services available, especially during this COVID-19 period and the impacts of it. And in particular, uh, since we're at Komen, uh, we are interested in breast health and cancer services. And so with that, I'm excited to turn it over to you. Thanks so much for being here. Well, thank you, Megan, for a wonderful introduction. And it's a pleasure to finally meet you virtually. First of all, I want to express my gratitude for Coleman um, as a, a community partner for CalOptima, but also as a nurse, I'm really grateful for your volunteer to be part of our care team. And also at the personal level, I'm most grateful for Coleman because you were there when my family member, my good friends going through difficult treatment and you were there. So I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you. And today uh, we are going to talk about how we are together caring for our member with breast cancer through COVID together. And I prepared a deck for us, so I'm hoping that um, we can pull that up. Thank you. Next slide. Cal Optima, we actually started preparing for COVID. Uh, we were thinking it was just going to be a very bad flu. And little do we know, in March, um, everything intensified. On March 3rd, we were meeting with Orange County Healthcare Agency and tried to formulate a COVID response plan. And we actually um, been meeting every single day. And then March 11, the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 outbreak as a pandemic and everything just intensified. We have to activate social distancing and at the same time, we are getting multiple calls from our members and providers because our providers are really struggling. They don't have enough PPEs and a lot of them close their doors. They cannot uh, risk their staff um, to keep the door open. And our member gets very upset because they cannot reach their providers. So at that juncture, we really had a skyrocketing calls from multiple um, uh, stakeholders in our community. And quickly in March 15, that's where our federal government, our state government responded. We were able to um, quickly pivot into telehealth once our health and human services issue limited waiver for HIPAA. So 
which means that um, you can actually conduct a telehealth visit using your cell phone, using FaceTime, using Skype, and that allow our member to be connected with your provider and while maintaining um, safe social distancing. So our uh, call actually um, taper off at that point, and quickly Medi-Cal and Medicare both uh, allow our um, provider and member to interact through um, social distancing telehealth. At the same time, there were flurry of change in policy coming from our state, basically allowing our health plan to loosening up a lot of our regulation so that we can continue our service under the circumstances. And at the same time, we had to quickly deploy all our employee into working at home. So as you can see, so much was happening at the same time. And unfortunately, we thought it was going to be two weeks. Now we're over two months. And as you can see, at the same time, we hear a lot of um, focus on our member with COVID-19 um, and those who are in the hospital. But most importantly, we have members who are still going through regular treatment, like our member with breast cancers. And also we have other members that their treatment cannot stop because of social distancing. So what do we do? Next slide. Before I go into what are some of the intervention, I just want to highlight our population with breast cancer. As you know, Cal Optima, we serve one in four uh, residents in Orange County. We have a, a lot of members with breast cancers and I would say majority of them are in our um, ethnic group breakdown. You can see majority of them are Hispanic. Um, that's consistent with our uh, demographic. And also you can see that the majority age groups between 41 to 64. Um, although we focus mostly on our female members, there are 5% of male population with breast cancer. Next. And this is just to give you a snapshot of our Cal Optima population with breast cancer. We currently have about 2,000 members in treatment. We have about 26 members with the diagnosis, perhaps um, just finished your treatment or they are still, you know, um, with the active diagnosis or in remission, not in treatment. And you can see that geographically we're pretty much um, spread throughout the county. Next slide. So the most important thing for Cal Optima is to ensure continuity of treatment. As you know, um, when you're under chemotherapy, radiation therapy with a cancer diagnosis, it's a life and death situation that you cannot just say, we stop the treatment for a while. So we have to find a way to help our member to make sure their treatment's not interrupted. That's the most important priority for us. We want to continue face-to-face -face visit for chemotherapy and radiation using COVID-19 precautions. So we follow CDC's um, infection control guidelines and making sure that both our provider and our member are safe. We also extend our prior authorization for procedures. For example, if the woman's scheduled for elective um, breast reconstruction, we'll make sure that authorization is extended much longer so they don't have to go through prior authorization process again. And at the same time, we leverage uh, telehealth, either through phone or video conferencing to make sure that the care continues between visit. And also we provide extra layer of support. Next slide. Because our employee, a lot of them are also shelter at home, we actually intensify our outreach to our members, um, making sure that they have an oncology case manager or care navigator, and making sure that we reach out to them more frequently, especially for those who are isolated and vulnerable, and checking with them on a regular basis continue to provide education and self-protection and safety. As we know, during chemotherapy, their immunity are significantly impaired. So they are the most vulnerable and high-risk population. 
And we also provide resources as needed to help individuals manage the complexity of the pandemic, even as simple as having food delivered to their homes. And we coordinate transportation to and from treatment as needed. Next slide. COVID-19 does impact our access to care. And so we actually reach out to our radiology center to find out what are the significance of their impact. And a lot of them, they are reported that, um, especially for uh, scheduled preventive screening, they are seeing a significant reduction in appointment due to cancellation. And some of them even have up to 50% of their appointment canceled. Nearly all of the contract uh, mammogram facility are performed screening and diagnostic mammogram using um, appropriate COVID safety measures. And this is actually was very challenging at the beginning because you heard about the shortage of PPEs. So we're making sure those critical sites have adequate PPE to continue to serve our members. And one center actually decided to close and postpone any preventive screening uh, until post-COVID. And center often will accommodate urgent requests for suspected mass or lump that um, need to have a diagnostic um, mam mammography. Those are accommodated and scheduled. Next. As you know, we have to maintain a lot of social distancing, and this is a challenge for our um, place of service as well. And a lot of things they are doing is making sure that um, members are keeping social distancing even at the facility, leveraging online registration. Um, before the member can go into treatment, they are making sure they get their temperature before entry. And oftentimes this is the same for the worker as well, to making sure that uh, our worker are also healthy and taking care of our vulnerable population. We're making sure our member is symptom-free and wear masks. And if they don't have masks, we're often making sure that we provide masks for them. And the office staff also wear masks and technician wear masks and gloves. And if the member does show any symptom, we accommodate and reschedule until they are showing um, no more symptoms before they return. Next. Some of the um, radiology centers modification are physical facility modification. For example, they'll make sure they're six feet distance marking, making sure that there are uh, private screening room. Um, there's a lot more cleaning going on between patients. And some of them actually space out with limited hours so they can you know, see one member at a time. And some only um, allow patients. So as you can see, oftentimes our member like to go to their treatment with family member or friends to support them. In this case, oftentimes they are alone. And some of them have reduced number of staff because of the uh, less revenue with less visits. And some staff are actually furloughed during this time. Next. So at this point, uh, we actually have a few slides try to address questions specifically from Coleman. So I was wanting to invite Megan to um, go through these interactive uh, slides with me. Excellent, excellent. Well, uh, first question is, is incredibly important right now. And does, Betsy, does Cal Optima expect membership to increase due to unemployment and people losing the employer-sponsored health insurance? Uh, and other issues that are have been created by this pandemic? Yes, indeed. Um, the revised California state budget was just released in May 14th, and is, it is anticipated a potential increase in total Medi-Cal membership up to 14.5 million statewide. So in Orange County, Cal Optima project a 7.6% increase in membership through July 2021, up to about 800,000 members, according to our um, draft uh, fiscal year 2020 and 21 budget. And what we are seeing right now is, although um, we have not seen the surge of membership coming in, we are start seeing uh, our membership slowly come up. As you know, the state also making sure that um, the eligibility um, requirement is 
it's less stringent so that if member cannot renew the eligibility, they are not um, removed of their benefit. So we are seeing the membership slowly creeping up and what we're also anticipating that there will be significant reduce in our um, reimbursement. As you know, at the same time, we're seeing the increase of our membership, but at the same time, our state is going through some major um, financial crisis as well. So we are facing a lot of tough decisions to make sure that balancing what our member need as we have more membership, but at the same time, you know, what are some of the limitations in terms of our revenue stream. So you'll, you'll hear from our next board meeting, a uh, very serious discussion, and we're looking to our board for direction. In the past, as you know, Cal Optima has always buffered our providers from any type of major state um, funding cut. So we're hoping that we're able to maintain our care delivery system, making sure our members' care continues while we manage um, kind of the significant um, academic, ac academic downfall. Next slide. And, and Betsy, when does CalOptima ante anticipate that membership will begin to increase? And I know you did touch on this a little bit Already. Right, and also uh, this is depending on how fast a social agency enrolling them, and um, this is really something that um, our healthcare agency, in partnership um, with our um, county healthcare agency and Cal Optima, uh, we are getting ready for the new uh, surge of membership coming in. And typically, we will see in first day of every month. Um, so we anticipate that uh, trend will continue to go up month by month. You know, and I know you just you just spoke about the, the this this balance between this growing population of what we could call uh, the newly vulnerable, and and yet pairing that with this reduction in budget. And how do you, how then can you respond and meet that need? And so are, is CalOptima looking at any new programs or services that can help adapt and meet, and meet this new need? CalOptima actually under um, our population health management department already have a very robust program for um, our multiple population segments, starting from the healthy or the one with emergent risk or the one with uh, chronic conditions. We anticipate those programs will continue. Uh, one area that we probably will increase more support is through our behavioral health uh, integration and really trying to integrate all type of behavioral health, mental health services into medical care. And that's something I will talk a little bit more about later. And this is just a slide to give you some example of all the program that we have. We continue to make sure that we are uh, addressing, you know, breast cancer screening, cervical cancer screening, and also colorectal screening. And those are the things that we will continue to enforce. The good news is our board member recently just approved for us to move forward with member texting, because under COVID-19, we recognize that we have to be able to reach our member broadly and quickly, and one of the two to do that is to make sure we have texting capability in addition to calling them or mailing them. So that's one thing that we're very grateful that we'll be able to do very quickly, and those type of um, uh, reminders for uh, cancer screening will be part of that communication going out concurrently. Next slide. So at this point, I'm gonna pivot a little bit to a slightly different topic. As you know, with COVID-19, it's not gonna be resolved in a short period of time. This prolonged isolation is causing a lot of stress and anxiety, and a lot of people are predicting the second wave is mental health crisis. And California is actually very lucky to have our um, first Surgeon General, Dr. Nadine Burke-Harris, she's a champion in the nation to call out that average childhood experiences 
or ACEs, and toxic stress represent a public health crisis if not addressed. And there are copious scientific evidence linking that um, person with more than four ACEs uh, are high risk for conditions such as cancer. In fact, seven out of 10 top cause of this country, you can trace back to someone experienced multiple ACEs. Next slide. So our Department of Healthcare Services during COVID uh, sent out another out plan letter and really to point out the mental health implication during COVID pandemic. And we're seeing a lot of that because we're getting a lot more member calls. Uh, we are getting a lot more um, requests for mental health and behavioral health support during this time. And we wanna make sure that we continue to support integrate medical and behavioral health in all services, not just physically, but at this point, telehealth. So we're actually moving forth in expanding our behavioral health telehealth capability. So let's say if a member call us through our behavioral health line, they need to be connected to a behavioral health therapist. We're able to do that. And if they cannot be seen physically, we have a telehealth capability. And we want to make sure we um, have a strong care coordination and service linkage, especially for our population going through treatment for breast cancers. Um, it's an extremely stressful time, and last thing they want to know is, you know, no one's there for them. So this is something my behavioral health integration team are very much um, aware, and all of them are trained in trauma-informed care, so they are very responsive, knowing that during COVID, um, a lot of people with past trauma, it could trigger to new trauma. And those who never had trauma before, COVID-19, just by taking care of people going through a lot of stress, their secondary stress. So as you can imagine, our frontline workers, our uh, caregivers, or even just being isolated at home, family members, we are under tremendous stress right now. So we are educating a provider to learn the signs and assess for stress-related uh, mobility and create response for treatment plan. One of the things that we've done is actually providing toolkit for providers, and we also concurrently provide toolkit for our members so they can recognize these signs um, of increased stress so they can take appropriate um, self-care um, techniques. Next. Some of the activities that we're doing is, like I mentioned, we expand our telehealth and behavioral health. We also purposely try to identify behavioral health providers who are specializing trauma-informed care and anxiety disorder. And um, these are the providers who are um, currently in our network, but we also reaching out to other providers and contract with them to see our members. And Using telehealth, we actually have the capability of tapping into provider who may be in other uh, county or other states. So that will give us more support for our members. And um, we have um, clinicians who are available real time, or uh, we will help facilitate making appointment. And here's our number that we encourage 24-7. Uh, Anyone can call one 855 a seven seven three eight eight five, and someone will be there to um, respond to their request. Next, for the community, we are collaborating with our county behavioral health services and also Be Well OC. Uh, we share our resources and we making sure that on our website, you know, there's anywhere you go to, there will be support and we're educating community-based organizations on how to support members with mental health concerns due to COVID-19 uh, health emergency. And timing is very appropriate. May is Mental Health Awareness Month, so we're taking this opportunity, send out a lot of uh, information through social media um, to making sure that you know there are self-help tips available, but anytime they call us, we can connect them into services. And I just want to make a point about not only our member who's going through difficulty, those who take care of them are also going through a challenging time, and children who are stuck at home. So we, we 
multiply all these stressors at the same time. So a lot of times our self-help tip is for multiple age group, just so that we are equipped to really support each other at this time. Next slide. So there's always a silver lining behind a dark cloud. And um, I want to tap into the ancient wisdom of my culture. The Chinese word for crisis is called weiji. Weiji consists of two characters. Wei means a time of danger. Ji means a time of opportunity. So in the Chinese word for crisis, we're in a time of danger, but this is a time for opportunity. So I'm hoping that partner together with Coleman, with our community partners, we're going to get through this. And I really appreciate you reaching out and we have a chance to connect. We're in this together and I wish everyone safe and healthy. Thank you so much, Betsy, for sharing your time and your expertise. And really, it was just remarkable to hear uh, how many uh, members of our community that Cal Optima is already serving and, and the things that you are doing, you really jumped on these opportunities to meet these new needs and it's, it's quite impressive. And, you know, the community is better off uh, for Cal Optima being, being a part of Orange County and, and certainly with you being a part of Cal Optima. So thank you so much. I just want to share for all of the Komen supporters that have tuned in that we will be sharing these resources, the phone number, the links uh, to the websites on our page as well. And if you have any additional questions to please contact Komen and we can certainly, if we don't have the answer, to follow up with Betsy and her team and get, get the information uh, that you're inquiring about. So thank you so much again, Betsy, and just uh, stay safe, be well. Thank you, Megan, and thank you, Coleman, for all you do. Thank you.